So, sharpen your ears, turn your heads towards the stage, because I promise you I will capture your attention today with something truly incredible. Talk about setting high expectations for myself. Uh, my background is actually a movie lover. If I may switch slide. Pop. There's a lot of people in front of the receiver there, I think. There we go. Go back one slide. Now you ruined the surprise. This is my VHS collection. This is my first VHS collection. Uh, I was a movie lover at a young age, and I started working with special effects in movies and TV series. That's my background. And my VHS collection grew very fast into a huge DVD collection. And back in 2010, I started Viral Labs in the frustration of that the, uh, the industry wasn't moving fast enough to digital. So at Viral Labs, we're doing something truly incredible, as I mentioned to begin with, is we're trying to help the industry solve the biggest problem out there as we see it now. The play button works, right? All of us, most of us can watch what we want to watch, but the problem is finding what we want to watch in this big sea of content. Now, if you look at these numbers, even the best players in the market, Netflix, are we're still spending around one third of our time browsing around in these services. So to be able to solve this uh, problem for the future is key, I would say, for the OTT services. Now, one of the biggest, I would say, challenges we have is, is, there we go, metadata. The data that is available that basically describes our content today. Have everybody seen the movie Passengers here, or some of you? Good, good. It looks like a science fiction movie for everybody that hasn't seen it, but if we look at the data that is available at uh, IMDb, Grace Note, Rovi, and so on today for this movie, it's described with space station, spaceship, swimming pool, crying man, crying woman, and argument. Exactly. This is incredibly out of context when it comes to this movie. Now, with new technologies, with image recognition, we can see a lot of companies like Facebook, Google, Amazon, and so on, trying to solve the issue by adding more data. But all they're doing is creating a bucket of more data that is not qualitative for trying to describe the content we have. So to do the job well, we need to actually understand the emotions that a director or a producer is trying to communicate through imagery and sound. So basically, a director has a thinking when they create a movie. There is, the colors are there to affect our emotions, to make us feel joy, happiness. The soundtrack is there to affect our emotions. So to be able to actually data mine those type of data points is incredibly important for the future. Now, I will show you some really interesting data here. Everybody seen the movie Top Gun, I hope? Major spoilers ahead. Good. The movie Top Gun. Now, this is actually a neural network predicting human emotions for the movie Top Gun. So it's basically saying the emotional structure of how we humans would perceive the audio and video here. And the way we have trained the neural network, the AI, is that we have had people listening and looking at video clips that are four to five seconds long, and then after a rating system that we have built, basically rated the videos if they're positive or negative, if they're stressful or not stressful. Now, on the top of line here, you see positive and negative emotions. In the middle, you see stress levels. One hour into the movie, Top Gun, something very, very sad happens here. We see a big negative dip. Now, bam. Bam. No. There we go. It's when Goose dies. One hour into the movie, almost, we can see that when Goose dies, the audience, Goose is Tom Cruise's best friend, whoever hasn't seen Top Gun. When Goose dies, we see that the audience perceive it very, very negative, very, very stressful. We can see, actually, in the final fight of the movie here, is that it's very typical 80s and 90s movies where you have the hero getting his ass kicked for around 15 to 20 minutes. The audience is getting super stressed out by it, and it's super negative for a lot of time. Then we can actually see that the movie ends happily. We can look at a graph and see that a movie ends happily. Today, we have trained a neural network to be able to do predictions like this. Now, I'm going to have a bunch of spoilers, so I'm really sorry for everybody who hates spoilers. Hacksaw Ridge, have you guys seen that movie? 
I recommend it strongly. It's an incredible movie. Mel Gibson did a comeback in the director chair, and I think he created, a, uh, created an incredibly emotional story. Now we'll ruin it a little bit for you guys. Not too much, I promise. Is Hacksaw Ridge is about a soldier that will go out to war without weapons. Now, we can see this movie is structured in two, in two, in two, <laughs> in two, come on. There we go. In two segments. The first, seg the first segment of the movie, we can see the colors of, first of all, is when he's in the training session of the movie. So first half of the movie, he's at the camp, and all the other soldiers are bullying him because he don't want to go out in war with weapons. And we can see that every time he gets bullied, the audience perceive it very negative and very, very stressful with small peaks here. Now look at what happens with the second half of the movie. It's when he goes out to war and he saves every single soldier out there that bullied him at the camp. And as he's doing that, the audience is building slowly hope. And we can see that the movie ends very happily compared on the second half here. So, so A Quiet Place. You guys seen this movie? It's an interesting movie. It's, it's about monsters that attack humans when they make noise. So the whole movie is very, very silent, and it's super scary. What we can see in the data here is that the audience have no hope through the whole movie. It's just negative. They just, these people are doomed. That's what you think from the beginning to the end of the movie. And look at the stress levels. It's incredible. Now, what happens, the first peak we have is when the intro is, the second peak is when the monster attacks for the first time. Then when the family gets separated, we can see the big segment here where we totally lose hope. We get a little bit of hope back when the family gets to be together again, and then we lose hope again. Now, this we have done for 50,000 titles. Why have we done this? So we can actually create better discovery and recommendation for you guys, so you can find what you want easier. You guys seen Game of Thrones? Some spoilers for episode six? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. A little bit of spoilers for episode three. Stanislav, you talked about Game of Thrones, episode three. So during the break, I actually took out all the colors for the movie. This is more colorful. Than yeah, you can movie. see it. <laughs> this is episode three, actually, of Game of Thrones. And you can see it's super dark. And it's actually supposed to be dark. The directors wanted you to perceive it very, very stressful. No, not no. according to what I read. Because actually, the compression was removed. It was dark but the live streaming compression was removing a lot of the gray areas. So practically, if you watched it live mm. on HBO Go the first time, it was way darker in comparison if you download it on Nesfold, for Maybe, example. Maybe, but remember, you're talking to a movie lover here. So I am this, a movie lover. <laughs> <laughs> the director behind this, this is actually the darkest episode out of Game of Thrones. Every single episode is actually lighter than this one. And it's a little bit like, uh, a war. You want people to feel the panic that pe people felt on the war field. And that's why the director kept it super dark. But I agree with you, the streaming version was even darker than yeah, this. Absolutely. Made it a little bit unwatchable. Now, what do we use all this data for? We use this data to move away from metadata, those keywords I showed you in the beginning. Crying woman, crying man argument. We ask the neural network, it's not a human. We, we, we <laughs> program the neural network to cluster all the movies into clusters without metadata. So we removed from our, our client, Viaplay, removed all the metadata from 3,000 movies. All the genres, keywords, actors, director, no information except the video files. And the neural network clustered all, all, and all. No. Could you push space over there? There we go, thank you. It clustered all the action movies together without knowing their action, but not just that. It actually clustered them into smaller clusters where you had superheroes, you had action drama war movies into one cluster, and then you had all the car and racing themed action movies in one cluster. And remember, the neural network is not taught to look for objective stuff like cars or listen to for engine sound. It's actually looking at the emotional structure of the content. And it still understands that, that, I'm getting used to this. Look at this. This is the raw data from the slide that I just showed you. It clustered out of 3,000 movies, 
all of the Avenger movies as position one, two, and three as the most similar content together compared out of 3,000 movies without knowing that these are Marvel movies or, or Avenger movies. It did the same thing for, for, for the racing theme, as you can see it down there. So this is key. Why? 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 There we go. Because if we look at, take something in the movie The Martian, I hope the most of you have seen the movie Martian. If you would use metadata-based recommendations today, you would basically get a lot of sci-fi movies, as you can see. Or if you would use collaborating filtering, which is like Amazon's, people who bought this also bought this, or people who watch this also watch this, you would get a kind of a confused results also. But when you use emotional structure, look what happens. It truly captures that essence of the movie Martian. Every single movie there is about human relationships and survival. It's not about the big action and explosions up, out in space. So to be able to create something that is similar to something else is key, just like Spotify did with Weekly Discovery. I don't know if a lot of you guys are using Spotify. I am. There we go. <laughs> like similar TV shows. I'm sorry, guys, it's very slow, the clicking. There we go. To create the weekly discovery that Spotify has, but for our industry, we need to understand the context of the movie Martian, for example, if we're going to base a recommendation on that I have watched the movie Martian. So to be able to create this type of uh, solutions, I think it's incredibly important. These are Typical dead ends, it's when the movie ends, you lose the customer, usually. They have to go back to the start page, they have to browse all over again for the 17 minutes. But if you have the fingerprints uh, and the information that we have, you can actually give out the timestamp of when the movie ends, and then give recommendations on what you should watch next. So here it's key to understand the emotional structure. Why? Because if you want to give me something like path A, C here, as you can see, guys, is that here is two similar movies to what I just watched. But maybe I don't want to be stuck in this bubble of space theme. So there's also similar TV show in the middle and something out of the weekly discovery, something that is actually emotionally structured after what I watch. Maybe I can only watch two action movies in a row or two drama movies, and after that, I shift usually to something easier to digest, like a sitcom, Friends, or How I Met Your Mother, Big Bang Theory. Now, each of these paths, as I choose content, it's actually giving really rich data of what I'm choosing and what my own personal patterns are. So to pick up this information is crucial. It's crucial. Now, I'm going to show you something really incredible. I promised that in the beginning. And this is actually one of the world's first trailers, I would basically say. The content I will show you now, if I can get a little bit of audio, is 100% computer generated. This little preview that plays up here is not a competitor against the trailer. It's a 30 second to one minute loop that is supposed to give you an essence of what you're going to spend your next two hours in as soon as you hover above a poster, just like in Netflix when you do it in smart TVs, for example. This preview is done on the emotional data that I showed you on Top Gun. It understands exactly how to cut the movie, how to choose the scenes, and it chooses a song out of a library of 200 songs and adds that song to the trailer to create a mood setter. Now look at this. This is 100% computer generated. This is 100% computer generated.
computer made that, not a human. Now, to be able to scale something like this, I think, is a big part of an actual discovery, because if the poster is wrong, if the content is wrong, I'm not going to be able to, to, I'm not going to click the content. If the, I don't like the actor, if the poster has the wrong color, whatever. Now, to personalize trailers, this is kind of a fun project we did. The computer chooses the song and then cuts the movie after the song. So we did two, a little bit of an experiment to see, can we personalize even the previews? Maybe some people want a little bit more of the action, and some people want a little bit of the humans and the actors and less action. So this is, I can roll it a little bit. You can lower the volume a little bit here if you like. There you go. Everybody seen National Lampoons? This is the song that the computer chose itself. But in this one, we forced it to choose a thriller song. We said, this is the song you will cut the content for. Look what the computer did when we actually forced it to use a thriller song. Now, natural lampoons look like a horror movie suddenly, right? This is just a little fun experiment that we did that I think is really incredible. Now, did all of this lead to actual results? I would say yes. We did pure A-B testings with our clients and customers. One of the interesting ones was that the content that were added to the watch list by the users was actually increased with 27% or three times more. But what we also saw is that people that are adding content to their watch list are seven times uh, more uh, bigger chance for them to actually do a purchase on a TVOD service, a transactional service. On an SVOD service, they actually have a bigger uh, chance to, to start a stream. And I think my time is over. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. This was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent.